as y'all know, man, Montverde went undefeated last year. I was hoping somebody would beat him. I had to be a hater, bro. I had to. I was hoping somebody would beat them, bro. Or at least giving them some competition. Bro, if you go watch my videos where I reacted to them, they was blowing people out crazy, bro. Blowing people out crazy. So when I seen this video, I had to react to it. I want to know, what are y'all doing to recruit these players? And I don't know. Like, what are y'all doing? Because these young boys can hoop as a team. And all of them was dogs. From one through five was dogs, bro. They was annihilating teams, bro. Just crushing them by 30, 40, 50. They beat somebody by like 60 points one one joint. I had to end the video, bro. It was getting too bad, bro. But yeah, man. We had to check out inside America's number one ranked basketball school, Mount Verde Academy, bro. Um... I think it's in like Vermont or something crazy. I don't know. But yeah, man. It's your boy, Keese. If you're new to the channel, man. Welcome to my reaction videos. Like, comment, subscribe. Turn on them post notifications. And I, I promise y'all, I'm going to keep turning up, bro. That's all I can do is turn up and make these vids, bro. People loving the old school joints, so I'm going to have to do the throwback Thursdays. Or two, th two throwback videos a week. We might got to stick to that regimen. So we can stay in the algorithm and stay going crazy, bro. Larry Bird joined with Absolute Bonkers. Go check it out, man. Great video, man. I can see that everybody love Larry Bird. But yeah, man. Um, Let's get into this video. See, see the ins and outs of this school, man. Mont Verde. This is the most prestigious basketball school in the entire country. See, Mount Verde Academy is home to the reigning undefeated boys national champions. Bro, they went 35-0, and 0, bro. They went 35-0. and 0. They didn't even... Nobody... I think a couple teams came close to almost beating them, but not really. Um, They had Cooper Flag, which is going to Duke, obviously. I hate Duke. Um... Yeah, you're going to, I mean, we're going to whip that ass next year. I mean, what's what we do every year, bro? Y'all know what we do. I'm a Tiles fan. If you don't watch the channel, you're new to the channel. You know I'm a UNC Tiles fan until I croak. You feel me? So, yeah, man. Um, I need them to send some players to North Carolina, bro. Fuck all the bullshit. Five five-star players, including the number one ranked school. Good, Cooper. To tour their storied facilities, which include a custom weight room, training room, banner filled gym, a full bar, and so much more. Bro, even the bushes look like they shave them bitches every day, bro. Excuse my language. The bushes look like they trim them every day. Nothing look out of place. This most cleanest place I ever seen. Weight room look clean, like nobody barely used it. The gym look like nobody even ran on the floor. Like, this joint is crazy, bro. So with that, we're going to start out right here in the Hall of Champions. To meet up with Coach Boyle, who will be giving us the tour. And try to find out Montford's big secret to non-stop championships. Yeah, you guys are going to need some more wall space here, man. When you win too many national championships. Right off the bat here, I wanted to know what makes one of these championship teams so special. With the uh, 2020 oh, it's Kaden, man. team, yeah. Besides the first group, obviously, with four guys that got one and done, that drafted in the first round. The bench of that team, which had, like, Ryan Nemhard, those three guys, and then Caleb Houston, number 22. It was, like, the starting lineup of the next year's team that won the national championship, which was their bench, who came into the game for them at, like, the fourth. Fool. He's basically saying that their bench could go play, be, start another school, another basketball team, and win championship. Like, the, all the kids that's on the bench from the previous year won the championship the next year. That's, reg that's ridiculous. Kate Cunningham, a pure dog in the NBA. Um, What's buddy name? I, for, I keep forgetting his name. Lights kid cuz they just show with the good defense. He's in the NBA. Like, they just produce all NBA stars, bro. Four-minute mark. 
was the team that won the national championship the next year. So it was like the most elite group of like junior. Scotty uh, Bonds. Behind those guys for the following year because of that. Every day you were going again for, you know, guys that were a year away from being one and done. Yeah, I just, I was listening to his little talk and he was saying that like he chose to grow up in the Celtics organization and learn under Brad Stevens. And I mean, now he's a championship winning coach. So for sure. it's kind of that same mindset. All right. So now that you guys have an idea of the winning that goes on here, let me introduce you to the secret plan for today. Montverde has seen numerous NBA Ben Simmons, D'Angelo Russell, Russell, Joel Embiid, RJ Barrett. But I want to put Coach Boyle on the spot here and finally get the answer to the two most asked questions in high school basketball. Who is Montverde's greatest player of all time and which team is actually the best? I ended up asking Coach Boyle, let's just say he gave a shocking answer. Single elimination matchup, I'm going with the It's the best answer yeah. you could get. But for now, let's go check out the gym and all the accomplishments. Food, the facility is OC. The whole campground, whatever it's called, is OC, bro. Even the baseball field look like they, they, uh, fucking, they, I don't know, the, the fucking dirt look rich. Like they plowing that shit every day, raking it every day, bro. Come on, man. It's inside of it. Championship banners, double row, pretty cool. You know what? It's uh, <laughs> I know we. There's been like a controversial thing about that here between like the coaching staff when they started to do that. Like if it's blocking the other ones, or if there was a better alternative, but I don't know that there is. We're gonna end up running out of space for all this stuff at some point. But when did Mont Verde really become like the basketball like at the center in the South? Like 2011, 2012, when Coach Boyle took over here. It's a different, a little bit of a different mentality where like every single year the goal is we're trying to be the number one team in the country. Not just we're trying to be pretty good or we're happy to be in the top five or invited to certain events. Like, no, like the resources here, the facilities, character. I'm so wrong. I just looked it up. When he said South, I'm like, I'm tripping. They're in Florida. They're not in Vermont. I don't know why the fuck I thought that. <laughs> Excuse my language, yeah. Guys are like New Jersey, Northeast, like edge and toughness. To the, to the program where you had a lot of great athletes from Florida and this area and it's like can we use a combination of like talent size now like good basketball coaching and tough intense defensive pressure and that and championship mindset the first year 2012 probably I don't know if the team was even started inside the top 10 in the country to start the year by anybody at the end of the year we lost in the national championship to Finley prep and again we were up like 14 that we probably shouldn't have even been in the championship then following year 2013 we won for the first time, and then we won 13, 14, 15, three in a row. You know, after that, when you start to have a run like that, you're on ESPN all the time, you have a few guys get picked in the top one, two, or three in the draft a few years in a row, it makes it a lot more attractive and a lot easier where now, if you, you know, have a conversation with somebody and you, you mention you're from Mount Bird, you're the most, yeah, every family's going to listen, every player's going to at least want to hear what you have to say and take an interest in what the program might have to offer. I don't want to I don't want to put you on the spot here yeah. and, and get you in trouble, but, I mean, there's just a legitimate Hall of Fame right here of NBA All-Stars. Yeah. Who out of all these guys are the best actual Mount Bird career, do you think? You know, you could look at it a lot of different ways. Like, you know, sometimes you get sent sentimental for like the less glamorous situations like I'll say like RJ Barrett is one where when he was a freshman before he like ended up reclassing like Cooper did to skip basically his last year we lost in the semifinals the next year we lost in the championship and then his senior year we end up going 35 and 0 but that's a team and that's a guy who like his career is special in a way because it was such a build-up of like Jordan talks about it like the last RJ Barrett like from Canada or something I'm trying to figure out how are these kids like do they stay on campus, bro? They got to. Because I'm sure, like, these dudes is not from Florida. Like, they, I know R.J. Barrett is from Canada. If I'm not tripping, bro. I know he's from Canada. So, how are they getting recruited, like, for high school? This is crazy, bro. And I'll be wondering, like, if they didn't go to Mount Verde, would they be as good as they... Uh -huh. Would they have sent went to the NBA? Y'all let me know what y'all think, bro. I'm thinking that in my head. If they didn't go to Mount Verde, would they still be in the NBA? Y'all let me know what y'all think, bro. Last dance was like those years of losing and getting knocked out and like being bad is like the same thing that drives you 
and that was a really special. <laughs> Dunked career. all on him. On the other hand, you could have a Ben Simmons who, as a sophomore, junior, and senior, we won the national championship every time, and he was on the court three quarters or more. And then another one would be Tariq Whitehead, who went here as an eighth grader, was on the varsity team, so he was an eighth grader. R.J. Barrett's senior year of high school, so he was on four teams that won the national championship and finished number one in all the polls. So a guy who on paper is like the winningest player and, you know, a special story where the, the thing that I think is partially is separated between us and a lot of the other prep schools, a lot of the team is here for multiple years. You know, like, yeah. exactly. Like, there might be a year where you have to have four or five new guys because you had a lot of seniors. So it's a combination of those small hometown teams that just know how to play well together and have, have experience together and the talented prep school type guys that you see at this level so it's been good now that we know the guys who are going down in montford history are the best i wanted to see more of the gym because up these stairs is what they call the perch this is the best seat in the house to watch a game it's a spot where they show off all of their trophies and actually have one of the only full service bars in high school basketball for alumni and family to enjoy everybody sits up here it's funny because like my mom and like wife who like probably yeah. are half paying attention to the game like to sit up here uh, we got our championship ring that I wonder if they got to pay for these seats. Are they got to pay tickets for these? Or it's just like, if you got enough clout, you can sit right there. Like, bro, they got a full-service bar in a high school basketball gym. Like, what is going on, bro? You can get lit, get you some snacks, and watch the basketball game. Watch them blow somebody out by 40, 40 ball. This year from our 2020 team because... We never had a formal event at the end of the year because of COVID and stuff. We had a full banquet with like Cade and Scotty and all those guys attended in like uh, November. And I lost the ring like that day. <laughs> like like in the 24 hours, I lost the championship ring. But I don't really care because one of the things we talk about all the time is like, you know what? We should go bust our ass the whole year to try to win because we're supposed to or because we think we're capable of it. And like everybody take a picture with the trophy and then throw it out the window on the way home. It's like, back. what's up with the, why does D'Lo get his own separate jersey up there? So this is the funny thing. So in the early years, you know, Coach Boyle only came here in 2012. So D'Angelo was a sophomore that year. So it was still kind of like a slow matriculation yeah, yeah. of guys that you might retire their jerseys. By that time, whatever year he came back to do that, it was probably like 2016, 2017. They're like, you know what? That's a great opportunity if we're ever going to retire his jersey like so they did it and then you know discussions were happening about retiring other people's jerseys you start to realize like we're going to run out of numbers and like not be able to like have a team <laughs> yeah or like we might as well not retire them so we hung his jersey and i guess we would say it's like hung there in recognition but i think we've taken away the idea of retiring jerseys because we were probably You're missing about half the, yeah we'd be missing <laughs> half the numbers that are possible so awesome yeah let's check out the rest of the place here you won't believe how old this couple is. Excuse me? Is uh, D-Lo the best really player? Shape. What kind of diets they're on? Do you mind if I ask what... After we headed back... Is D-Lo the best player coming out of Mount Verde? It's definitely not Ben Simmons. Um, Kate Cunningham and Scotty Barnes, they haven't been in the league long enough. I'm going to say D-Lo, bro. Down, we decided to stop by... Ah, Joel and B. Gym. Now, Montford has 21 different sports at their school. Each oh, one no, has bro. Best teams on different levels. So hundreds of athletes each day come through here. But I wanted to know, what's the differentiator between a normal student and a future NBA pro? This is awesome, man. You guys have like a full uh, strength coach. Last year, we had 10 basketball teams, including the varsity basketball, the national team. Some of those would include like our postgrad. We have a varsity gold, which plays like sort of like regionally, and then there's probably one or two JVs, one or two freshman team, a middle school team. Throughout the day, those teams have like scheduled times in here and there's different coaches that work with them. The guy who's the head of the whole program, basically his job is like director of everybody. And then like individually, he only works with like a couple teams being like varsity. So like when we're in here three days a week, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, they're in here for like an hour to an hour and a half on those days, and he's working with them, and, you know. I mean, I play college football, so it's a little bit different, but, like, in football, you know, the best players are kind of born in here. Yeah. Like, this is where you become a dog. So, like, what do you think kind of separates the guys that, you know, get to go and have these, like, luxurious NBA careers? Is it built in here? Like, are they, can you just tell when they're in the gym it's a little bit different? I think that there's definitely certain things, like, you can't teach. Like, I think Cooper Flagg probably had a lot of different people that had 
have been influential in him becoming the player he is. But I think nobody taught him to have the aggressive mentality he had. I'm sure he was tackling kids in the sandbox. You know, like, yeah, yeah, you just yeah. have a different sort of thing where no matter what game it is, if it's a game you could have 45, you're going to go after every rebound and you're going to go do it. So the thing is there's a lot of kids that have similar talent. There's probably right now 40 kids between the class of 25 to 27 that are between 6'7 and 6'9 that can kind of shoot, mm -hmm. that can dunk, that can run, that have a good body. It's like, who are like the 10% that play hard and care if they win and lose? And like those guys, if they get around the right people, are probably going to end up making it. They're like a... Hey, mentality is big, bro. You got to be head that killer mentality. Bro, they're going to have... They're going to be good, bro. He said they got teams... Middle school teams that's already in their program, bro. They gonna have they have years and years of years of ass whoopings to handle, bro. That's all I heard. They gonna be whipping y'all tails for years. It's crazy, bro. Hey, this program is like that, bro. This program is OC. Uh, Varsity locker that's kind of this stuff. Yeah, I can show you. This looks like every other high school locker room in the country, and you'd be right, but you see behind this door, the varsity team gets their own special spot. Now, it's literally, like I said, like, we, this was like our film room. And we see? <laughs> Sweet, bro. With a facility like this, how could you lose? How could you want to lose? They providing everything for you, bro. This is living the life. I wonder... Hey, comment down and let me know if they stay on campus, bro. Let me know. Their recruiting is crazy. We kind of converted it to be like our own, like, smaller, uh, you know, locker room when we're getting ready. So, like, we put kind of some of this stuff on the walls. Like, I'll update. There's a photo of the gym we were going to be playing in. And then some graphics I saw people posting on social media. Sidebar, this gym was, I was at this game. This gym was insane. Yeah. Uh, high school gym there with a jumbotron at center court. Uh, yeah, that was just pretty silly. It was nice. The final stop on our tour was their training. High school gyms, that's how you know. Some, some cities... High school sports are taken very seriously. Not even college. High school, bro. Um, they got a Jumbotron in a gym in high school in Indianapolis? Like, come on, bro. Come on, bro. What? I'm trying to think. Basketball was was basketball. I'm trying to see what state basketball was invented. I forgot in what state. Massachusetts. Yeah, he invented in Massachusetts. Basketball was invented in Massachusetts by James Naismith. Yeah. Um this this yeah, this this facility is OC, bro. How could you lose? It's a normal room in the honest. high school bedroom, except everything was built long enough for a seven footer. It's funny. Longest Norma Tech yeah, country. yeah, we have all them, all the Norma Tech. So you, any time of the day you come in here, there's definitely a lot of kids from different sports that are uh, doing their recovery and stuff. We had this where probably the entire seven days leading up to Derek Queen, Cooper Flag, Liam McNeely were leaving to go to the McDonald's All American game. So we were working out extra every day. And I would just stand here with the clock and force them to sit in here. And every few minutes, I just dump in more, dump in more ice. Keep but that at fifty. <laughs> you can imagine he's like crunched up in this thing because even it's this a big is, body. It, this is pretty big, but still, for guys that are six ten, six eleven, uh, <laughs> and freezing to death, <laughs> you can get kind of kind of tight in there. Now, with everything in the basketball center completed, we still had one question left to ask. Out of every single championship an NBA caliber team and player Montverde has had, which team? 
is actually the best. Was it Kate and M, Cooper Flag, or is there a Dark Horse contender? Well, Coach KVJ has seen each one of them up close, so it's finally time to go end this argument. All right, so the final question I think I got is probably the most viral one that everyone asks, you know, uh -oh. that which team was better, this year or 2020 Kate? I think... Or is there a different answer? It could be a different team. I'll say this. Number one, the 2018 team has to be thrown in there also. There's another team that went 35-0, and had five starters that have been in the NBA, and four of them that were drafted. So they got to be in the conversation. But I would say in a seven-game series, I would say I got to go with 2020 team. In a single-game college NCAA tournament style or high school style, like single elimination matchup, I'm going with the 2014 from this season. That's the best answer yeah. you could get. I appreciate the tournament, man. For sure. Yes, no sir. problem. Great to see you. Hey, I respect it. 2024 team, they was dogs. I didn't react to a couple of the games. I didn't watch the 2018 really with Kate and uh, Scotty. I didn't really watch a lot of them. Um, so I respect it. But this, this school is set up for greatness, bro. The whole setup is made for greatness. You got... Your medical stuff, you can recover. You got athletic trainers at a high school. Like, what high schools you know got all of that, bro? Especially in the DMV. Maybe like the prep, the um, WCAC schools. But majority of them probably don't have that, bro. You don't have a lot of athletic trainers. And if you do, it's probably one or two. They got a whole room for the shit, man. Dedicated to it. But yeah, man. This was a great video. Good insight. Now we know what Mount Verde looks like and where it's at. <laughs> I'm thinking it's in Vermont. It is in Florida. I'm tripping, bro. But yeah, man. I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Turn on the post notifications. Comment down below what y'all want me to react to next, man. And I got y'all. Roll to 1K. Consistent game. Consistent keys. Y'all be smooth, man. Peace.